Hello dear students. Good morning. How are you? Good. Enjoying your time, enjoying your days, enjoying your academics. Myself, Rajesh Dadich, your mentor in English from Shujyoti Educational Group, Kota. So students, today we are going to discuss your last short stories of your curriculum in the book Woven Words and that is your sixth short story the third and final continent the third and final continent by jhumpa lahiri okay this is a very interesting but very easy chapter so i hope you will not come across any kind of doubts any kind of problems you will better get it right before we proceed let me explain the title of the chapter the third and final continent third clearly expressed from this title that we are means the author is going to discuss and we are going to learn about three continents three countries we can say we can call them three countries what they are let us see india uk and usa and uh, if you are good at geography you will naturally find that all these three countries are in three different continents america you know well uk you know well and india of course asia right so we can say asia europe and america so three continents we are going to discuss about actually the story is very very simple the main character of this story is jhumpa lahiri's father right her father she has mentioned her father her mother and herself as the child character in this chapter okay jhumpa lahiri the author says that her father actually in 1964 the main character of this chapter i left india means he left for britain he left for the uk in 1964 for job he got a job over there and uh, he became a librarian and uh, being a bengali over there means in the uk also he was living in the community of the bengalis okay so he was quite uh, comfortable over there he was doing his job and uh, he got he became a librarian over there then in the due course of time as he was applying for different different jobs pan pan world so he got a job in boston boston is in america let me tell you boston is in america he got a job of librarian over there but at the same time coincidentally he got engaged and his marriage was fixed his arranged marriage was fixed so at the same time he had to book his uh, flight for calcutta at the time it was known as calcutta but now kolkata right of 60s so he got back to he got back to india got married and his wife is mala he spent a few days with mala and then he gets back he flies back to boston america to join his new job as a librarian okay and uh, despite being married he did not take his wife because her papers means visa passport like these uh, documentation was not uh, proper was not complete so he had to go all alone by himself for around 3 weeks so he he go he went over there he got settled and uh, he got settled i mean to say he just uh, took uh, his accommodation at ymca ymca means young men's christian association he got room and uh, at the same time he was searching for private lodging also and uh, he got a job and he got his lodging also and his new landlady was mrs croft then we learn later but this is enough for you okay and the third and final continent what does it mean means finally the main character protagonist the author 
Now here this main character got finally settled in the USA. Now what does this title mean? This means we are going to learn different different cultures and civilization of three continents. Means in what way the author this main character gets acclimatized get accustomed to the rituals to the customs traditions of India Britain and then USA there is much difference between the customs and traditions of the USA and the UK. So, this all we are going to learn in what way he gets adjusted himself. Let us read. I left India in 1964 with a certificate in commerce and the equivalent in those days of 10 dollars to my name. For three weeks I sailed on the SS Roma uh, ship an Italian cargo vessel in a third class cabin being poor being an average middle class family and next to the ship's engine he got his himself settled across the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. These three seas are there it means he is crossing three continents maybe. So and finally to England means the UK. I lived in North London in Finsbury Park in a house occupied entirely by penniless Bengali means poor Bengalis were there. So, being poor and being Bengali he was also feeling quite comfortable while being with the Bengalis of his own status. Bengali bachelors like myself at least a dozen and sometimes more all struggling to educate and establish ourselves abroad. Some people were getting settled over there and some, some people were joining there and some were leaving because of job or marriage. Right. I attended lectures at the LSE and worked at the university library to get by to support himself. We lived three or four to a room, shared a single IC toilet and took turns cooking pots of egg curry which we ate with our hands on a table covered with newspapers. Students in these lines, the lifestyle of bachelors has been clearly depicted and it arouses interest in us and in this way this story becomes very interesting and the language is very simple you can see. Apart from our jobs we had few responsibilities on weekends we lounged barefoot in in drawstring pyjamas you know pyjamas and some strings are there drinking tea and smoking Rathmans or set out to watch cricket at Lord's the one of the great cricket ground. Some weekends the house was command with still more Bengalis to whom we had introduced ourselves at the green grocer or on the tube and we made yet more egg curry. Sometimes we had already prepared egg curry for us and we were about to consume we were about to consume our meals, but all of a sudden some newcomers maybe might join us and then we had to prepare some more curry. Okay. So, and played Mukesh on a grinding reel to reel and soaked our dirty dishes in the bathtub. Every now and then someone in the house moved out to live with a woman means someone got married and new person came and the previous person left. Reasons may be may vary from person to person whom his family back in Calcutta had determined he was to wed, he was to get married. In 1969 when I was in my early 30s, when I was 36 years old means early 30s we may call my own marriage was arranged and around the same time I was offered a full time job in America in the processing department of a library at MIT. Students what is MIT? Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Okay, This is one of the great technology colleges of the world. The salary was generous enough to support a wife and I was honored to be hired by a world famous university. 
and I and so I obtained a sixth preference green card and prepared to travel farther still. So, in this way I got a job. By now I had enough money to go by plane means I had to go back to Calcutta to get married and now I had earned uh, little enough to support my airfare. Right? I flew first to Calcutta to attend my wedding and a week later I flew first to Boston to begin my new job. During the flight I read the student guide to North America. The students whenever we are going somewhere for the very first time we are just curious to know about the tradition culture of that place. So, he just he on the author the main character also thought it better to go through the guide so that he may be familiar right. He may be familiar with traditions and customs and places to uh, visit over there in America. So, he went through this student guide to North America a paperback volume that I had bought before leaving London because 7 shillings, uh, seven shillings 6 pence on Tottenham Court Road for although I was no longer a student now I was no longer a student I was a working person right I was on a budget uh, all the same. I learned that Americans drove on the right side of the road this is one of the differences you know in, in India we just prefer to drive to the left but they drive to the right not the left and that they call a lift and elevator you know in India we call lift but they call it elevator and you know we call biscuits and they call biscuit they call cookies we call french fries they call different names right finger chips like so many differences are there elevator and an engaged phone busy means whenever in India we are not able to connect properly be uh, engaged beep sound is there. So, we say this is engaged engage right phone engage right some something like that we speak, but in America they keep saying the phone is busy the phone is busy. The peace of life in North America this is the continent now you have got it. North, North America, South America these two continents are there out of seven is different from Britain as you will soon discover in what way the difference is there you will soon discover in the chapter. The guidebook informed me everybody feels he must get to the top do not expect an English cup of tea. Okay. As the plane began its descent means it was coming down means it was just landing over Boston Harbor that city airport the pilot announced the weather and weather and time and that President Nixon at the time students uh, in the year 1969 the President of America was Mr. Nixon and at that same time America made an achievement you know in the space. So, America got successful by landing a few spacemen a few astronauts on the surface of the moon and they were for the very first time they, they had landed in the history of mankind and they were Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin and Michael Collins. These three Americans became successful people who landed first who stabbed first on the surface of the moon. So, that good announcement of achievement was made by the president of the time Mr. Nixon and that is why it was declared a holiday for them national holiday for them. Okay. So, Nixon had declared a national holiday two American men had landed on the moon several passengers cheered and they all were saying God bless America God bless America yay hooray in this way they all were celebrating. God bless America one of them hollered across the ale 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 is the is the same uh, corridor or gallery type on both sides seats are there and the common passage between two rows is known as ale right. So, across the ale I saw a woman praying a woman was praying over there I spent my first night at the YMCA young men's Christian association in central square in Cambridge at inexpensive accommodation it was quite cheap right recommended by my guidebook. So, it was walking distance from MIT that institute and steps away from the post office and a supermarket called 
purity is supreme. So, in this way, the, this has been mentioned just to show that the author, the main character was quite comfortable while being over there in his first few days. The room contained a cot. What was there in the room? In that YMCA, a cot was there, a desk and a small wooden and wooden cross on one wall. A sign on the door said cooking was strictly prohibited means forbidden that was means cooking was not allowed. A bare window overlooked Massachusetts Avenue, this premises and a major thoroughfare common. Common path was there with traffic in both directions to and fro vehicles were moving everybody was busy ok. Car horns shrill and prolonged blared one after another in this way he is saying he is trying to depict the city life. This lifestyle is quite different from that of India. Flashing sirens heralded endless emergencies and a fleet of buses rumbled past. Their doors opening and closing with a powerful haze throughout the night. Atmosphere was not peaceful the author the writer wants to say. The noise was constantly distracting at times suffocating I felt it deep in my ribs just means he was not feeling comfortable because of this noisy atmosphere. Just as I had felt the furious drone of the engine on the SS Roma this is the ship on which he had come over there right. So, on the engine side he took his place we are already learned in the beginning but there was. But there was no ship's deck to escape to, no glittering ocean to thrill my soul, no breeze to cool my face means all these things he came across while being on the ship ok when he left India. No one to talk to I was too tired to pace the gloomy corridors of the YMCA the lifestyle was quite boring to the writer ok. Uh, I want YMCA in my drawn string pajamas instead I sat at the desk and stared out the window at the city hall of Cambridge and a row of small shops. In the morning I reported to my job at the dual library a beige fort like building a fort like building was there and this is about exterior right exterior of the building means uh, you may call how it was looking like right. Building by Memorial Drive, I also opened a bank account, rented a post office box, temporary post office box he rented and bought a plastic bowl and a spoon at Woolsworth store whose name I recognized from London. I went to Purity Supreme wandering up means moving here and there up and down the ales converting ounces to grams and comparing. You know students in India grams are used but over there in America ounces term is used. It also shows the difference ok. So, he bought a small carton of milk and a box of cornflakes. This was my first meal in America. I ate it at my desk I preferred it to hamburgers, hamburgers or hot dogs the only alternative I could afford in the coffee shops on Massachusetts Avenue and besides at the time I had yet to consume my be any beef means non veg ok. Even the simple core of buying milk core means task task of buying milk was new to me because in while being in India he never went out he never bothered to go out to buy milk. But in America he himself had to go out. In London we had uh, we had had bottles delivered each morning to our door this is the difference ok. In India milk is supplied at home in Britain milk bottles are delivered outside our home and in America no such kind of services are provided but one has one has to go out to buy milk. This is also one of the differences in a week I had adjusted one more or less. I ate cornflakes and milk morning and night and bought some bananas for variety slicing them into the bowl with the edge of my spoon in this way taste was to be changed. In addition I bought tea bags and a flask which the salesman in Wordsworth this is the departmental store like uh, he went over there for petty shoppings. 
referred to as a thermos. You know, in India we call thermos, but over there it is known as flask. He informed me was used to store whis whiskey. Another thing, I had never consumed whiskey, but he told that I can use this thermos or flask for this purpose also. For the price of one cup of tea at a coffee shop, I filled the flask with boiling water on my way to work each morning. Actually, he didn't uh, he didn't have enough money. That's why instead of coffee, while sitting at the table, he used to consume hot water, which he kept, which he stored in the flask. Okay, I filled the flask with boiling water on my way to work each morning and brewed the four cups I drank in the course of a day. I bought a larger carton of milk and learned to leave it on the shaded part of the window sill. Window frame is known as window sill. As I had seen another resident at the YMCA do. Actually, I didn't know how to manage, but uh, one day I noticed somebody so doing like this. So, I also tried to copy that. Okay. So, to pass the time in the evening, I read the Boston Globe downstairs in the spacious room with stained glass windows. I read every article and advertisement so that I would grow family with things and in this way, I was going through newspapers, in this way, I was going through articles to get used to all these things and when my eyes grew tired, I slept. Only I did not sleep well. Each night I had to keep the window wide open. It was the only source of air in the stifling rooming suffocating room. And the noise was intolerable. They could not tolerate this noise. I would lie on the cot with my fingers pressed into my ears. But when I drifted off to sleep, my hands fell away and the noise of the traffic would actually uh, while putting my hands into my ears. So, I was disturbed too much because of the noisy traffic, but uh, all of a sudden my hands were removed and would wake me up again and pigeon feathers drifted onto the window sill and one evening when I poured milk over very picture like description has been given and in a very easy language. So, students I do not think you have any kind of doubt in understanding. Okay? I poured milk over my cornflakes, I saw that it had soared. Nevertheless, I resolved to stay at the YMCA for 6, it had soared means when the milk turns sour means dood for jana. So, it got soared. I did not mind until my wife's passport and green card were ready. So, have you got it now? Why his wife Mala could not accompany him to the USA? Because her passport visa like formalities were not complete. Okay? Once she arrived, I would have to rent a proper apartment and so from time to time I studied the classified section of the newspaper. Actually, he was just trying to find a private accommodation so that he might bring his wife over there and could live with her peacefully and comfortably. So, in the meantime, he came across an advertisement. I stopped in at the housing office at MIT during my lunch break to see what was available in my price range means in my affordability. It was in this manner that I discovered somehow the writer got success in finding a room, he discovered a room because immediate occupancy means the landlord or landlady wanted immediate occupancy. So, he decided to go over there to contact in a house on a quiet street. The listing said means in that advertisement it was mentioned that for 8 dollars per week this was the rent and I copied the number into my guidebook and dialed from a pay telephone means public booth sorting through the coins with which I was still unfamiliar. Actually, some coins are to be dropped to make a call. In India also in uh, metro cities, but uh, olden time it used to be, but now almost everybody even a rickshaw puller and uh, pushcart holder also uses mobile phones. So, at the time it was quite different. Sorting through the coins, I was still unfamiliar, small and lighter than shillings, heavier and students shillings you know in britain in the uk pounds are used but in the in the usa dollars are used 
so this is also one of the differences heavier and brighter than pesas pesas are used sub currency in india how many pesa are there in 1 rupee obviously 100 pesa in our olden times at the time we also used to learn like that okay who is speaking when i made a call i got a response i was asked now who is speaking a woman demanded from the another from the other side and her voice was bold and clamorous so i got a bit confused yes good afternoon ma'am here we say ma'am but over there we say madam madam in france madame okay so and in france monsieur her voice was bold and clamorous and good afternoon madam i am calling about the room for rent howard or tech she just demanded to know about me i beg your pardon me uh, i couldn't get sorry ma'am i couldn't get what you mean by howard or tech are you from howard university or technology institute gathering that tech tech referred to the massachusetts institute of technology i replied i work at devi library adding tentatively at tech and then said yeah i am not from howard but i am tech means mit i was given an address and an appointment for 7 o'clock that evening 30 minutes before the hour because he was in crying need of that room that's why 30 minutes before the given time means appointment i means this writer went over there before 30 minutes before the hour i set out my guide book in my pocket my breath fresh with listerine and means i just clean my mouth with listerine okay mouth freshener so i turned down a street shaded with trees perpendicular to massachusetts avenue and stray blades of grass poked between the cracks of the footpath some stray grass was there and in spite in spite of the heat i wore a coat and a tie regarding the event actually i just wanted to look sober that's why uh, i was wearing this coat it was summer time it was actually hot weather was hot but still i was wearing that coat so even as i would another uh, any other interview i was mentally prepared as if i was just trying to face an interview i had never lived in the home of a person who was not indian this was my first time that's why i was feeling a little bit hesitant also the house surrounded by a chain link fans was of white with dark brown trim unlike the stucco row house i had lived in in london this house fully detached was covered with wooded shingles means some pieces of stones bound mounts right with a tangle of forsythia bushes a kind of flower bushes were there plastered against the front and sides when i pressed the calling bell the woman means doorbell was there the woman with whom i had spoken on the phone hollered from what seemed to be just the other side of the door one minute please i was responded like this several minutes later the door was opened by a tiny extremely old woman a mass of snowy hair was arranged snowy hair means she was quite old that's why all her hair were was white like a small sack on top of her head as i stepped into the house she sat down on a wooden bench position at the bottom of a narrow carpeted staircase once she was settled on the bench in a small pool of light she peered up at me with undivided attention now she looked at me she gave attention to me she wore a long black skirt that spread like a stiff tent to the floor actually quite long skirt she was wearing and a starched white shirt edged with ruffles means some plates are there on both sides and they are used in courts in india okay ruffles at the throat and cuffs her hands folded together in a lap had long pallid fingers means dull and glowless fingers means she was old that's why pallid fingers were swollen knuckles means knuckles means these joints of her fingers and tough yellow nails 
age had battered her, spoiled her features, so that means she was quite old, that she almost resembled a man with sharp sunken eyes and prominent creases on either side on her nose, her lips chapped and faded had nearly disappeared and her eyebrows were missing altogether means entirely nevertheless she looked fierce. So, this is the appearance you may be asked uh, write the character sketch or mention how Mrs. Croft looked like. So, this is her appearance in this paragraph ok. Look up she commanded she shouted even though I stood only a few feet away. Fasten the chain and firmly press that button on the knob. This is the first thing you shall do when you enter. Is that clear? Now, she has started telling him, telling the writer how he was supposed to behave while being in the house means at the entry. I locked the door as directed and examined the house next to the bench on which the woman sat was a small round table its legs fully concealed means covered much like the woman's means the legs of woman's uh, woman's legs were covered by skirt exactly in the same way the legs of this table were also fully covered concealed means covered or hidden by a skirt of lace the table had a lamp a transistor radio a leather change purse with a silver clasp and a telephone. A thick wooden can coated with a layer of dust was propped against one side. There was a parlour to my right light with bookcases and filled with shabby claw footed furniture. This is how the room was looking like means interior of the house. In the corner of the parlour I saw a grand piano with its top down piled with papers piles of papers were there. The piano bench was missing. It seemed to be the one on which the woman was sitting because she was already sitting on that bench that is why um, there was no bench at the piano. Okay. Somewhere in the house a clock chimed 7 times. Chimed 7 times means now it was 7 o'clock. Okay. You are punctual. So, uh, half an hour before he had already uh, got to the place. So, he was known as punctual you are punctual it was a compliment. The woman proclaimed I expect you shall be so with the rent. So, means she is saying as you are punctual of time. So, I expect you, be to, you to be punctual exactly in the same way for rent also means you will be paying your rent well on time. I have a letter madam in my jacket pocket was a letter confirming my employment from MIT he was showing his identity that he was really working at MIT which I had brought along to prove that I was indeed from tech because in the very beginning he was asked what what was he asked Howard or tech. So, he was tech means he was from MIT she stared at the letter then handed it back to me carefully gripping it with her fingers as if it were a dinner plate heaped with food instead of a sheet of paper. She did not wear wear glasses and I wondered if she had read a word of it. The last boy was always late. Now, she is saying was always late means in paying rent it still owes me 8 dollars. Howard boys are not what they used to be. That is why in the very beginning she was just asking. In her opinion negative attitude was the negative uh, opinion about Howard students, Howard people who rented her house were there right. So, uh, only Howard and tech in this house, house tech boy. It is very well the writer is saying you check the lock. Yes madam she slapped the space beside her on the bench with one hand and told me to sit down. For a moment she was silent then she intoned as if she alone possessed this knowledge. There is an American flag on the moon. Now, she was announcing exactly the same statement as made by, pres by the president Nixon. I told you about the landing on the moon by Americans. There is an American flag on the moon. Yes, madam. Until then, I had not thought very much about the moon shot. 
It was in the newspaper, of course, article upon articles were published because this was one of the great achievements made by America at the time. The astronaut, because at the time there was a cutthroat competition between <coughs> America and Russia. At the time, Russia was known as USSR. The astronauts had landed on the shores of the Sea of Tranquility. Tranquility means peace, eternal peace. What does it mean? Sea of Tranquility means before that no human being had dared to step on. That's why it was quite peaceful. I had read traveling farther than anyone in the history of civilization. For a few hours, they explored the moon's surface. They gathered rocks in their pockets, described their surroundings. She is just mentioning what these astronauts did. A magnificent desolation according to one astro astronaut means no human being lived over there. That is why it was desolate means there was no sign of human settlement. He spoke by phone to the president and planted a flag in Lunar soil, lunar means related to sun, related to moon, okay, related to sun is solar, related to moon is lunar. The voyage means journey, the voyage was hailed, welcomed as man's most awesome achievement. I had seen full page photographs in the globe of the astronauts in their inflated costumes and read about what certain people in Boston had been doing at the exact moment the astronauts landed. On a Sunday afternoon, a man said that he was operating a swan boat with a radio press to his ear. A woman had been baking rolls for her grandchildren. Means, in these lines it has been mentioned how the Americans were reacting at this achievement made by their own nation. The woman bellowed, a flag on the moon boy. I heard it on the radio. Isn't that splendid? Isn't that splendid? Means they all were feeling quite happy. Yes, madam. But she was not satisfied with my reply. Instead, she commanded, say splendid. Splendid. With zeal and enthusiasm, you should say, because this is the achievement made by our nation. I was both baffled, means confused, and somewhat insulted by the request. She was saying, I had to repeat, say splendid, splendid, so I felt a bit, a bit humiliation also. It reminded me of the way I was taught multiplication tables as a child. Actually, I was just a mature man, but I was told to repeat this, so I thought uh, as if I were really a child and I was getting commands by an elderly person, as exactly as I used to be in my early childhood, when I was supposed to learn tables. 4, 1, ja 4, then student was supposed to repeat, 4, 2, ja 8, in this way, okay. Repeating after the master, master means teacher. Setting crossed leg without shoes or pencils on the floor of my one room, Tolly Gun School. Tolly Gun School, this is the area in Calcutta at the time when he was just a child, the writer was just a child. It also reminded me of my wedding when I had repeated endless Sanskrit verses after the priest. Means when he was getting married, means when the rituals were going on, wedding rituals were going on, so the Panditji, the priest was telling him to do this and telling him to chant this and that. So exactly he was reminded of two things. One, when he was just a child in his school days and uh, second, when he was getting married, so in the course of and during this process, he was just reminded, okay, I barely understood, which joined me to my wife, I said nothing, says planted, the woman bellowed once again, she shouted, are you hard of hearing, I have told you to repeat, says planted, planted, I murmured, I had to repeat the word a second time at the top of my lungs so she could hear, maybe she was hard of hearing. I am soft spoken by nature and was specially reluctant, means not willing to raise my voice to an elderly woman whom I had met only moments ago. Actually, I didn't feel like shouting at the woman and because she was elderly and for the very first time I was. So our curtsies and ethics did not allow me because we Indians are not allowed morally. We are not allowed to speak 
allowed in front of women and elderly people. So, I was just following my ethics only. But she did not appear to be offended, means unpleased. So, if anything, the reply pleased her because her next command was go and see the room. I rose from the bench and mounted the narrow carpet, carpeted staircase. Staircase were there, stairs were there, so that place of stairs known as staircase and that was covered with carpet. There were five doors, two on either side of an equally narrow ha hallway and one of one at the opposite end. Only one door was partly open. The room contained a twin bed under a sloping ceiling, a brown oval rug, a basin with an wash basin with an exposed pipe and a chest of drawers. Actually, these rooms were not looked after, well looked after because nobody was living there. That's why it shows what these rooms were looking like. One door painted white led to a closet means Almira type wardrobe was there, another to a toilet and a tub. The walls were covered with grey and ivory, ivory made of elephant teeth, a stripped paper, wallpaper was stripped and the window was open, net curtains stirred in the breeze, I lifted. I lifted them away and inspected the view means I removed the curtains and then I had a look at what was looking and what, what I found outside the window. Okay. A small backyard with a few fruit trees were there and an empty cloth stein. I was satisfied from the bottom of the stairs I heard the woman demand what is your decision means I was upstairs and she was downstairs so while being downstairs she just called out and asked me what is your decision means what have you decided whether you have decided to take up this room or not. When I returned to the foyer means crossing that uh, corridor I went downstairs the place where she was sitting and told her she picked up the leather change purse on the table opened the glass fished about with her fingers and produced a key on a thin wire hoop keychain. <coughs> she informed me that there was a kitchen at the back of the house accessible through the parlor. I was welcome to use the stove as long as I left it as I found it. Sheets and towels were provided, but keeping them clean was my own responsibility. It was my own responsibility to manage all these things provided to me. The rent was due Friday mornings on the ledge above the piano keys means that mantel piece was there. So, I was supposed to place the rent on that mantel piece about the piano okay. and no lady visitors were there means we people were not allowed to bring any female with us. This was one of the strict conditions. I am a married man madam it was the first time I had announced this fact to anyone but she had not heard in the uh, we already learned that she was hard of hearing, so maybe she had not heard. No lady visitors, she insisted. She did not hear, that's what she is saying. I have said no lady visitor is allowed here. She introduced herself as Mrs. Craft. You can call me Mrs. Craft. I am Lady Mrs. Craft. My wife's name was Mala. The marriage had been arranged by my older brother and his wife. Why? Because at the time ethics were there that uh, we were not allowed to settle our own life partner, look for, find our own life partner, unlike today. Okay. So, at the time elderly people, parents or elder brother used to find out the life partners for us. So, the marriage had been arranged by my old brother and his wife, means my sister-in-law. I regarded the position with neither objection nor enthusiasm. It was a duty expected of me as it was expected of every man at the time in, in the 60s. She was the daughter of a school teacher at Balaghat who Mala. Okay? I was told that she could cook, not embroider, not embroider, sketch landscapes and recite poems by Tagore. At the time, whenever life partner was to be selected, these elderly people used to uh, ask, you know cooking, you know sewing, you know embroidery like this. So, he is telling what attributes were there in Mala's personality. 
but these talents could not make up for the fact that she did not possess a fair complexion and so a string of men had rejected her to her face actually she was she had been rejected by so many people because of her complexion she was 27 i was 36 and she was 27 an age when her parents had begun to fear that she would never marry and so they were willing to ship their only child halfway across the world in order to save her from spinsterhood spinsterhood students this is uh, life and this is the time period of one's life when women remain unmarried women i'm not saying girl if girl is remain single she is known as unmarried but when a woman is there so she is known as a spinster so her lifetime is known as spinsterhood means her parents did not want her to remain unmarried throughout her lifetime and she was 27 at the time for five nights we were we shared a bed means he enjoyed his marriage each of those nights after applying cold cream and braiding her hair which she tied up at the end with a black cotton string she turned from me and wept she missed her parents although i would be leaving the country in a few days actually this is the introduction and in this with this in a very natural natural way the writer is depicting each and everything that's why this chapter comes closer to us to understand custom dictated that she was now a part of my household not her parents and for the next six weeks she was to live with my brother and his wife cooking cleaning serving tea and sweets to guests in this household quarters these are because i was to leave for america for six weeks it has been mentioned student please mind it six week means one and a half month i did nothing to console her i lay on my own side of the bed reading my guidebook by flashlight and anticipating my journey i was packing positively okay at times i thought of the tiny room small room on the other side of the wall which had belonged to my mother now the room was practically empty the wooden pallet on which she had once slept was piled with trunks and old baddings nearly six years ago before leaving for london means in 1964 in the very beginning it has been given in 1964 he left for london okay i had watched her die on that bed had found her playing with her excrement in her final days before we cremated her i had cleaned each of her finger nails with a hairpin and then because my brother could not bear it actually my elder brother could not tolerate all these things that's why being close to my mother i had to perform all these duties i used to clean her i had assumed the role of an of eldest son and had touched the flame to her temple to release her tormented soul to heaven the next morning i moved into the room in mrs croft's house when i unlocked now he is coming back to the reality current time so he is saying i moved into the room in mrs croft's house when i unlocked the door i saw that she was sitting on the piano bench on the same side as the previous evening when first time he met um, one evening before so she wore the same black skirt the same stars white blouse and had her, her hands folded together the same way in her lap she looked as much the same that i wondered if she had spent the whole night on the bench <laughs> exactly in the same way i found her once again at the same place sitting so i thought she had not she might not have moved from that place since previous evening I put my suitcase upstairs, filled my flask with boiling water in the kitchen and headed off to work. That evening when I came home from the university, she was still there. <laughs> Shocking. And sit down, boy. She slapped the space beside her in this way. Sit down. Yeah, sit down here. I paused. I sat beside her on the bench. I had a bag of groceries with me. Now I had made some you know, some petty shopping. Okay, more milk, more cornflakes, and more bananas because my inspection of the kitchen earlier in the day had revealed 
had disclosed that no spare pots, pans or cooking utensils means cooking pots were there means nothing. So, I had to buy each and everything. There were only two saucepans in the refrigerator both containing some orange broth. Broth means a kind of uh, greasy liquid when we prepare some curries okay? that is known as shorba. Okay? Broth and a copper kettle on the stove. Good evening madam. She asked me if I had checked the lock. I had I told her yeah I have. So, I told her that I had already checked the door it was properly locked. For a moment she was silent then suddenly she declared with equal measures of disbelief and delight as the night before there is an American flag on the moon boys. <laughs> yes madam once again she was repeating. A flag on the moon is not that splendid. I noted dreading what I knew was coming. Yes, madam. Says splendid. This time I paused, looking to either side in case anyone were there to overhear me. I just wanted somebody to tell her that I was already speaking, but she was somehow hard of hearing. So, though I knew perfectly well that the house was empty, I knew nobody was there other than me and that elder woman. I felt like an idiot, but it was a small enough thing to ask. Splendid, I cried out, splendid, in this way I just cried out, uh, so that she might hear me. I just wanted to make her hear me. Within days it became our routine and it became our routine and somehow the writer became friendly with the woman. In the mornings when I left for the library, Mrs. Croft was either hidden away in a bedroom or the other side of the staircase or she was sitting on the bench oblivious to my presence means uh, unaware of my presence listening to the news or classical music on the radio but each evening when I returned the same thing happened she slapped the bench ordered me to sit down declared that there was a flag on the moon an eccentric type a crazy type woman was there and generally students in old age it just happens and declared that it was planted. I said it was planted too and then we sat in silence as occurred as it was as strange as it was and as endless as it felt to me then the nightly encounter lasted only about 10 minutes inevitably means unavoidably she would drift off to sleep and just after that she was to go to her bed her head falling abruptly toward her chest leaving me free to retire to my room then she by gesture she used to say now you may go to go back to your room by then of course there was no flag on the moon the astronauts i had read in the paper had taken it down from flying back to earth the those astronauts had already got back on the earth but she still kept on speaking the same thing but i did not have the heart to tell her one Friday morning when my first week's rent was due, I went to the piano in the parlor to place my money on the ledge that uh, mantelpiece means upper side of the piano where he was supposed to keep the money as house rent. The piano keys were dull and discolored. You know piano keys? Sa re ga ma pa da ni sa sa ni da in this way some keys are there. So, here he is saying keys were dull and discolored when I pressed one it made a sound at all. I had put eight one one dollar bills in an envelope and written Mrs. Croft's name on the front of it. I was not in the habit of leaving money unmarked and unattended. From where I stood I could see the profile of her tent shaped skirt. She was sitting on the bench listening to the radio it seemed unnecessary to make her get up and walk all the way to the piano. Actually, I did not want to bother her. I thought she would just stand up from a chair, then she would go to the piano, she would collect the rent. It may bother her. So, I thought it better to place it in her hand. I never saw her walking about and assumed from the cane always propped against the round table at her side that she did so. Can was there, a staff was there uh, that could support old people, right? With difficulty, when I approached the bench, she peered up at me and demanded, 
what is your business what do you do what is your occupation and why have you come here what do you want i said madam i have come to give you rent the rent madam on the lathe above the piano keys she said keep it over there i have it here Ex i extended the envelope toward her ma'am i have just brought it so please receive it but her fingers folded together in a lap did not budge means move i bowed slightly and lowered the envelope so that it hovered just above her hands after a moment she accepted and nodded her head okay in this way she didn't say but she just nodded her head in agreement that night when i came home she did not slap the bench but out of habit i sat beside her as usual it had become our custom every day so without waiting for her instruction to sit over there i just went and sat beside her she asked me if i had checked the look checked the lock but she mentioned nothing about the flag on the moon now she was not repeating the same thing about the flag instead she said it was very kind of you actually students she was highly impressed by the way i gave her rent unlike other people previously i beg your pardon excuse me ma'am i didn't get very kind of you you are so nice she was still holding the envelope in her hand because she had never expected that she would be given this much respect on sunday there was a knock on my door actually sunday being holiday i was uh, at my home only so you can see an elderly woman introduced herself she was mrs croft's daughter helen her name was helen and she walked into the room and looked at each each of the walls as if the signs of change glancing at the shirts that hung on the closet the neck ties draped over the door knob in this way we move the door knob just to open the door right so she entered the box of the corn flakes on the chest of drawers the dirty bowl and spoon in the basin she was short and thick waisted with cropped silver hair and bright pink lipstick she wore a sleeveless summer dress a row of white plastic beads and spectacles it is the appearance how she was how she looked like means her daughter helen okay on a chain that hung like a swing against her chest the backs of her legs were mapped with dark blue veins and her upper arms says like the flesh of a roasted eggplant she told me she lived in ellington a town farther farther up massachusetts avenue where i was working i come once a week to bring my mother groceries she said that uh, she is not able to go out that's why every week i just happen to be a with groceries she requires has she sent you packing yet it is very well madam some of the boys run screaming but i think she likes you you are the first boarder means you are the first tenant she has ever referred to as a gentleman you know my mother was calling you a gentleman she was highly pleased with you not at all madam she looked at me noticing my bare feet okay bare feet i still felt strange wearing shoes in doors and always removed them before entering my room are you new to boston <laughs> new actually ma'am not only boston this is my first time i have come to america oh from where from means from where are you she raised her eyebrows i am from calcutta india i am an indian hmm is that right we had a brazilian fellow about a year ago you will find cambridge a very international city i nodded and began to wonder how long our conversation would last but at that moment we heard mrs croft's electrifying voice rising up the stairs when we stepped into the hallway we heard the hallowing you are to come downstairs immediately she was just shouting what is it helen hallowed back what happened i said immediately you are supposed to come down come down she was giving instruction to her daughter i put on my shoes at once helen sighed she had a deep breath 
we walked down the staircase it was too narrow for us to descend side by side. So, I followed Helen uh, first she went downstairs then I followed and uh, who seemed to be in my in no hurry and complained at one point that she had a back knee bad knee have you been walking without your cane Helen called out what happened you were walking without a cane she paused resting her hand on the banister and looked back at me she slipped sometimes for the first time Mrs. Croft seemed vulnerable very weak I pictured her on the floor in front of the bench flat on her staring at the ceiling her feet pointing in opposite directions but when we reached the bottom of the staircase she was sitting there as usual her hands folded together in her lap two grocery bags were at her feet when we stood before before her she did not slap the bench and ask us to sit down she glared what is it mother it is improper what is improper it is improper for a lady and gentleman who are not married to one another to hold a private conversation without a chapel one how is it possible you were talking to this man you are not married to this man and you are talking this is not proper this is improper Helen said she was 68 years old enough to be my mother but Mrs. Croft insisted that Helen and I speak to each other downstairs in the parlor she added that it was also improper for a lady of Helen's station Helen's status to reveal her age and to wear a dress so high above the ankle short skirt for your information mother it is 1969 what would you do if you actually left the house one day and saw a girl in a mini skirt you are saying that I am wearing short skirt then one day suppose you happen to go out in the market and you come across a woman who is wearing short skirt or mini skirt how would you react madam this is 1969 